What is the messianic mystery hidden in the name of Cain? We'll explore this mystery and more coming right up. Accompany me as we heed the words of the prophet Jeremiah and the apostle John. Join me as we investigate the sacred pages of the ancient prophetic text we call the Old Testament in search of Messiah. In our previous lesson, we learned that the number 100, or Quaff, identified the Son of Promise and the direct line of descendants that God had chosen through which to reveal His only begotten Son. The next letter in Cain's name after Quaff is Yod. Yod is one of four sacred numbers and it means ordinal perfection. So what does ordinal perfection mean exactly, and what does it have to do with Quaff and the number 100? Ordinal perfection simply means that the Lord God has ordained things in heaven to take place on earth. These ordained events will happen sequentially over a period of time resulting in the accomplishment of a divine purpose. The Hebrew name translated Lord in our English Bible is actually the name yod Hey vav Hey. This is a revelation of the name of God that discloses that He is the God who is our Redeemer and Savior. Notice that His name begins with the Yod. The message is simple. The Lord our Savior has a plan, a plan that will result in a divinely ordained purpose according to a preordained sequence of events that will result in the accomplishment of a heavenly and eternal plan. Noon. The next and final letter in the name of the first child born to Adam is is the Hebrew letter Nun. Nun is pictured as a fish and it means activity and life. So it's no surprise that it's also the number 50, the number of Jubilee. How do we get 50? The answer is 50 is 10 fives. It is ordinal perfection multiplied by grace. What is the numeric translation of the pictures and numbers in the name of Cain? Well, Cain is not the Messiah. Man has broken God's laws and is separated from eternal life. God has a plan to heal the breach and reverse the curse. It is a plan that will unfold over time through a specific line that starts with Adam and includes all the patriarchs mentioned in the fifth chapter of Genesis ending with Noah before the flood. The genealogy that ends with Messiah does not come from Cain, but from Seth, the son that replaced Abel. After the flood, the line continues through Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and finally Jacob. Jacob becomes Israel, and through his son Judah, the Messiah will be born into the world through the seed of Eve. In other words, Yeshua HaMashiach is born of a human woman and conceived by the Holy Spirit. This is the mystery of incarnation, the mystery of Genesis 3.15. Yeshua is perfect God and perfect man. Yeshua does not have Adam's corrupted DNA. Cain was not executed for his crime of murder, although God would require capital punishment for future murderers at a future time in the dispensation of mankind. Cain was shown grace and given a mark on his forehead to protect him. Many Bible scholars speculate that the sign was the mark of the Tav, a cross. Is that true? We do not know. We do know that God placed a sign on Cain and that it was a testimony to the sad event that now permanently marked Cain's life. Was it also a testimony as to the gracious and forgiving nature of God? Well, in the temporal realm it certainly was, but was it in the eternal realm? Cain was finally given rest from his life of wandering and settled down and had a family of his own. He built the first city and named it after his son Enoch. Enoch means teaching. Now this Enoch is not to be confused with the Enoch that we find in Genesis 5, the seventh from Adam, the Enoch that walked with God and was no more because God took him. Did God finally reject Cain in the end? Some argue that the scriptures are not entirely clear on the matter, leaving room for the possibility that even this worst of sinners came to put his faith and trust in God and found redemption and rest under the sign of the cross. For those of you that think that you may see Cain in heaven, I would leave you with two final mentions of Cain in the scriptures. If Cain was in fact a trophy of God's grace, would you be reading the following epitaphs? 
In 1 John 3.12 it says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. In Jude 1.11 we read the following, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Cain is mentioned 19 times in the Old and New Testament. Now 18 is the number that means bondage, followed by 19, which is 10 nines, or 10 plus 9. What does it mean? It means that there's a divine order, 10, ordinal perfection, that brings about 9, judgment. The messianic picture in the name of Cain tells a much more hopeful story. It tells us that man has been separated from God and life by his own sin. We are not moving toward the Lord. We are moving away from him as fast as we can. This is the sad story of Cain, but wait. There is an epilogue in his name that reminds us that while Cain is not the promised Messiah, his life does not negate the promise. The promise is made despite the sad and tragic history of mankind. God is going to keep his promise to send his anointed one through the promised seed of Abraham, Isaac, and finally Jacob. A deliverer will come, not in Adam's lifetime as Eve had hoped, but nevertheless Messiah would come and when he came, he would do a mighty deed that would restore life and relationship with God. The curse brought upon the earth would not be reversed by Cain, but it would be reversed by the second Adam, Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you for your interest in this article. Until next time, keep looking up. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this Hebrew word study. It is our prayer that you will draw closer to your Heavenly Father as you consider the divine revelation of Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God. Until next time, Shalom. We hope this study was a blessing to you and encouraged you in your faith. For more Hebrew word study videos, you can visit our site at thelivingword3d.com. And if you'd like to investigate this further, you can get the book from our online bookstore at rockislandbooks.com.